Mike Pence and Tim Kaine are both prepping for their face-off tomorrow night in the vice presidential debate, which, by the way, you can catch right here on One America News. Both candidates have disagreed with their running mates already this summer and fall, with Mike Pence saying human activity does contribute to climate change, while Trump thinks not, and Kaine opposing taxpayer funding of abortion, until he joined Hillary's ticket, at least. But this will be a unique situation tomorrow night on that debate stage, because both of these men, Mike Pence and Tim Kaine, are relatively well liked but not very well known. Their job tomorrow for both of them will be defending the two least liked presidential candidates in the history of our country. And just look at what they have to defend. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> Sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. The former president uh, of Mexico, Vicente Fox, he said today, and I'm quoting him, he said, I'm not going to pay for that, quote, effing wall. <laughs> so if you don't uh, get an actual check from the Mexican government for 8 or 10 or $12 billion, whatever it will cost, how are you going to make them pay for the wall? I will, and the wall just got 10 feet taller, believe me. It's got 10 feet taller. Joining me now is professor at Empire State College, Ian Reifowitz. Ian, hi, thanks for being here. Always a pleasure, Liz. All right, Ian, let's talk about this vice presidential debate. Tim Kaine versus Mike Pence. Uh, I think it's safe to say that this debate's gonna be just a bit more substantive uh, than last week's debate, but what do you expect from them? Yeah, I think you're right about that. Uh, look, these are two pretty um, substantive guys, relatively low-key personality-wise. I don't think either of them is going to um, make big news during the debate. Um, uh, I'd be curious to see uh, from Mr. Pence. I mean, the, the, the most, um, I guess, notorious is the wrong word, but the, let's use that word anyway. The most I don't notorious know if he's exciting enough to be notorious. <laughs> That's a great point. Uh, TV appearance was when he was on with George Stephanopoulos about a year ago. And Stephanopoulos asked him four or five times, you know, does the religious freedom law that you signed allow for discrimination against gays? And he refused to say yes or no. I have a feeling that's going to come up. I presume he's going to have a better answer. Uh, that was a rough morning. I right. remember feeling bad for the guy. I, I, uh, but other than that, I don't see either of them having too big of a vulnerability. No, I think for both of them, uh, their, uh, their running mates, their respective running mates, are just going to tell them, don't say anything stupid, don't grab any of the headlines, don't harm me in any way. Because the reason that Donald Trump picked Mike Pence and Hillary Clinton picked Tim Kaine was they both wanted to make the safe choice. They both wanted uh, their running mates not to be the story. They wanted to be the story here. But, Ian, let me ask you this. Do you foresee uh, either of these gentlemen talking about themselves? Because, like I said in the introduction, they're not uh, very well known, either of them. Or are they just going to be speaking on behalf and defending uh, their running mates? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I think probably both of them will emphasize something about themselves. Pence is going to emphasize his uh, um, social conservatism, his ties to the evangelical community, which is one of the main reasons Trump picked him. And I think that's a, a plus for, for Pence and for the Trump-Pence ticket. And Kane is going to emphasize his uh, connection to the Latino community, his uh, work in public service in, in, I believe it's Nicaragua, his fluency in Spanish. Uh, and also perhaps his Catholicism and his uh, uh, his uh, Catholic social values. Right. I think each of them bring brings something positive to the ticket, and that's what you'll hear. But you're absolutely right. Both of these guys, for each of them, no news will be good news. Right, and I, I think you're right about the biggest liability for Pence is uh, the religious freedom law in Indiana. But I think the biggest liability for Kane here uh, is the Catholicism that you mentioned, his uh, his stance on abortion, really, because he says he's personally opposed to it because of his, uh, he calls it his traditional Catholic beliefs, but then uh, his policy on it is very pro-abortion, and he's even flip-flopped uh, his position since he's joined Hillary's ticket on whether or not he believes uh, taxpayer, taxpayers uh, should be funding abortion. So I think those are the two things they're going to hit get hit hardest on, but really I think the focus is still going to be on Hillary and Trump here. Ian, we're out of time. Thank you so much for being here today. Our final tipping point of the night, the real secret in the Trump tax returns isn't exactly what Hillary thinks it is. We'll be right back.